Today, Elgato have released their very first products in the world of microphones called Wave, or well, specifically Wave 1 and Wave 3. I have no idea what happened to Wave 2. Elgato have a history of innovation and really focusing on products built for creators. Their stream decks, capture cards, green screens, and key lights have all become staples in the streaming industry. But microphones? That's a tough market to try and break into. In this video, we are gonna be diving deep into these new microphones from Elgato, looking at exactly how they perform and comparing them against some of the other similarly priced microphones. We'll also be taking a detailed look at their new Wavelink software, which spoiler alert, is really, I think, the best feature of these new microphones, especially when you integrate it with a stream deck. My aim with this video is to give you all the information you could possibly need to help you make the decision whether either of these microphones are gonna be a good choice for your live stream. As always, I'll have timestamps down in the description below, so if you want to skip ahead, look at different chapters, then go and use those timestamps. And uh, I think we should probably go and plug this in and use it as our microphone for the rest of this video so you can hear exactly what it sounds like. Okay, so what you're listening to now is the raw audio from the Wave 3. Now, I haven't done any post-processing, no effects or anything like that. I want you to actually hear what it sounds like. Uh, I maybe done a small boost in levels just so that you can still hear me when I'm editing, uh, but no post-processing, no effects. And don't worry, we're gonna come back and do a deeper dive on the actual audio quality. Uh, just wanted to use this microphone for the rest of the review. So let's start by actually looking at some of the technical specs of the Wave 1 and the Wave 3 and any differences between them. Both the Wave 1 and Wave 3 are USB condenser microphones and they have a tight, fixed cardioid polar pattern. Both of them are made of mostly plastic, but with some steel and aluminium parts. Technically, they're both spec'd pretty similarly, with the main difference being that the Wave 3's analog to digital converter can use a sample rate of 96 kilohertz compared to the 48 kilohertz of the Wave 1. Both of them come with an included stand, which is what I showed at the beginning them attached to, which just unscrews, and they also come with an adapter if you do want to mount it to a boom arm like I have done here. One thing to mention on the boom arm front, I'm using the Rode PSA-1, which is pretty common, and I actually found that the microphones are a little bit too light for the PSA-1. Um, they kept sort of springing back up into the air, and I couldn't get it in a low fixed position like I have done now. So what I had to do was use a screwdriver just to tighten some of the joints at the elbows to make sure that it stayed uh, in these lower positions absolutely fine. So physically, the main differences between the Wave 1 and the Wave 3 is that the Wave 3 also has a capacitive mute, which means that you can disengage your mic just with a light touch on the top, and it will completely mute the audio coming from it. And the Wave 3 also has a multifunctional dial, which allows you to adjust the input game, or the output volume, or the crossfade between your microphone and your PC audio mix, whereas the Wave 1 dial, that just adjusts the output volume. So from a purely specs point of view, these mics seem pretty comparable really with a lot of the other offerings on the market, but we all know that specs don't mean anything really in the audio world. There's a lot more that goes into it, which is why I'm so glad that Elgato made a really smart decision to leverage the expertise of Lewitt, which is a company that has been building professional grade studio microphones for years. I really feel like if Elgato had just gone and tried to design and engineer a microphone completely on their own, I would have been worried that they'd miss the mark and deliver something kind of subpar. So thumbs up to Elgato for realizing that the best way of making a good sounding product was to partner up with some audio experts. Oh, and thank God they didn't go for like everybody else does, the copy of the Blue Yeti where you can select different polar patterns because honestly that creates way more problems than it solves. So many people have their Blue Yetis set up incorrectly because of the choice of polar pattern and not just sticking to the default cardioid, which is what 99% of people will want to use. So well done Elgato for not being like everyone else and just copying the Blue Yeti. Right, so enough talking about the tech specs and the build quality of the microphone. Let's talk about what I think is the biggest selling point and the best feature of these new Elgato Wave mics and that is their new software, Wavelink. Wavelink essentially allows you to have complete control over your stream's audio sources through two independent output mixes, one for you and one for your audience. This allows you to have completely different audio levels of every individual audio source for you and for your stream. So you can do things like playing music, copyright free of course, for your stream, 
and then you can have that music muted for you and your headphones so you can concentrate on the game. Or you can have different levels for your teammates on Discord so your stream doesn't hear them quite as loudly as you do in your headphones. This gets even cooler when you add in an Elgato Stream Deck as you effectively have all of that granular control over the levels of all of your different audio sources at your fingertips. Okay, so let's actually look at an example of how you would use this for your stream. So you can see I've got the Wavelength software open here and it has correctly identified the Wave 3 microphone that I'm using and showing the levels coming into that. Now you can jump into some options here and change the gain and the volume. Uh, with the Wave 3, you can actually enable those and change them on the microphone, but with the Wave 1, you would have to jump into the options here, as well as enabling some extra features, which we'll get onto later. But you can also see we'd have separate channels that they've set up for us for system, music, browser, and voice chat. So let's actually go through an example of exactly how we can set this up for our stream. You notice down here in the outputs, we have two separate outputs. We have the monitor mix and the stream mix. You want to set the monitor mix to be your headphones. So that is actually how you're monitoring all of these different sounds. And the stream mix is obviously the one that is gonna be going into OBS. So if we go and start playing some music on Spotify, you might notice that nothing is showing up for the music. You guys can't hear any in OBS and I can't hear any out of my speakers. That's because right now Spotify isn't set up to use these uh, Windows audio devices uh, that will separate them into separate channels. So if we come up here and click this icon here next to the settings cog, it's actually gonna open up our volume device preferences in Windows and we need to find our music, which for me is Spotify, and change the output device to the Wavelink music uh, audio device. Now there's a few different ones here and you wanna select the right one for what it is. So if it's your game, if it's AUX or if it's whatever. I'm gonna select music because this is obviously music. I click that and instantly we can see the music channel is now showing the music playing. Hopefully you can hear it in the OBS recording right now and we can actually change the volumes for me and my headphones, which for me is my speakers right now, and for the stream. So if I turn this up, you should hopefully hear it get louder. So you can see how much granular control you could have over something like your music. Now you can do this across everything. So you can set your browser to a specific audio channel. You can set your Discord to a specific audio channel. All of these can be separate audio sources that you can then change volumes from on the fly with Wavelength. And this gets even better when you integrate it with a Stream Deck. So what I've done here is I've opened up the Stream Deck software where you actually choose the customizing and layout of your Stream Decks alongside the Wavelength software. So you can actually see how uh, my Stream Deck is affecting the Wavelength software. So what I've done here is I've set up, or Elgato rather, have set up some default profile pages where you can actually customize exactly what you want each thing to happen. How it's set up is that each uh, two rows of keys is based on the two different channels here. So you can see here I have plus minus, plus minus. Those are for the plus minus of my headphone mix and the plus minus of my stream mix. And this is the microphone channel, the system channel, the music channel, and the browser channel. Also down here, the bottom row of keys that they have given you is some uh, customization based on what you are hearing and what your stream is hearing. So you can see here what my monitor mix is set at 50%, and I have the plus and minus buttons to be able to increase or decrease that. We also have this button to be able to swap between what we are monitoring. Are we monitoring the monitor mix or are we monitoring the stream mix? So right now we're monitoring the monitor mix. I can click this button and it will swap over to monitoring the stream mix and you can actually hear my microphone coming back out my speakers. So disable that so you don't get the feedback. Obviously, if you're wearing headphones, you wouldn't get the feedback because it wouldn't bleed back into the microphone. Um, but we also get some options here to be able to uh, mute and unmute the whole stream. So if you desperately need to mute the stream for some reason, you can click this button. I just said, and now hopefully you guys can't hear me in OBS and I was looking at my OBS meters and indeed you couldn't. Also some volume uh, buttons here to be able to change the volume of your stream mix. And finally a button to go back home to your original stream deck layout. Just to quickly show you how easy it is to add another input in Wavelength software, you can just hover over an empty bank here, click add audio input, choose what kind of audio input it is. So let's say it's game and there you have it, you have it set up and then it's gonna be set up as a Windows device as well. So as long as you check your game to use that Windows device, it's gonna show up in a separate audio channel that you can choose what levels you want. And you can of course scroll across and use all actual nine banks. So what it is, is it's the Wave microphone plus eight banks. So nine in total that you can use to control all the different audio sources on your stream. So really, I think the Elgato Wavelink software is the best feature of this microphone. The microphone itself is obviously good. You can hear that for yourselves. 
uh, but I think the real value comes from this Elgato Wavelink software. And yes, you probably can do something similar with some software like Voice Meter Banana or Voice Meter Potato, but again, Elgato have just made it so intuitive and easy to use, exactly the same as they did with the Stream Deck, where you could technically do the same thing with a numpad, but the Stream Deck is just so much more intuitive, so much more easy to use, and actually better functionality now that it's been developed through the years on the software. I hope that Wavelink follows that same path where Elgato will keep improving it over time, maybe adding things like noise suppression, EQ capabilities, compressors, things like that to the software so that you can really make the Wave microphone work in any application and make it sound really, really professional. But even now my head is starting to turn with the possibilities that you have with this microphone being integrated with the Stream Deck and the Wavelink software. Because you can do some cool multi-actions like swapping to a BRB scene, muting your microphone, uh, turning up your music volume, all with one click from your Stream Deck. I mean, that's a simple example. I'm sure you guys and people in the community are gonna come up with much more complex and impressive ideas, but the fact that it's integrated into the Stream Deck, I think is a big selling point. Okay, so we've covered the physical microphones themselves and the Wavelink software, which I think takes them to the next level, but none of that really matters if they don't compete and compare well with other offerings in the market at this price range. Speaking of price range, the Wave 1 is launching with a price of $129.99, and the Wave 3 is at $159.99. So we're gonna be comparing them with the Blue Yeti and the Samsung G-Track Pro just to see exactly how they stand up. If you'd like to see a full comparison video of these Elgato mics against everything else that's really in that $100 to $200 range for USB microphones, so things like the Audio-Technica AT2020, the HyperX Quadcast, the Rode NT-USB and the Blue Yeti, then let me know down in the comments below because I think that'd be a really useful video where you could compare the intricacies and differences between each microphone, uh, but I'll only make it if there's enough demand from you guys in the community. Okay, so onto the actual comparisons between the Wave 3, Wave 1, G-Track Pro and Blue Yeti. I'm gonna take it off the boom arm just to make sure it's a fair test, put them all back on their original stands and have them roughly the same distance away from my mouth um, so that we can really get the comparison right. This is the audio from the Elgato Wave 3 with the gain set to around 40%. This is the audio from the Wave 1 with the gain set to around 40%. This is the audio from the Blue Yeti. It sits on a slightly taller stand, so it might be slightly closer to my mouth, uh, but the gain is set to around 30 to 40%. And finally, this is the audio from the Samsung G-Track Pro. Again, sits on a similar height stand to the Blue Yeti, and the gain for this one is set around 55 to 60%. Okay, so just listen back to the audio samples, and I think Really, between the Wave 1 and Wave 3, I couldn't tell any difference at all. I imagine the internals of those microphones are exactly the same. The Blue Yeti maybe benefits ever so slightly because it is closer to my mouth with the bigger stand. So really, with any of those three microphones, I think they're going to sound very similar, especially if you get them up onto a boom arm nice and close to your mouth. The only reason I didn't test all of these mics on a boom arm is because I don't have the adapter for the Blue Yeti to go onto a boom arm, so I clearly need to purchase that. The G-Track Pro, I think, just doesn't sound quite as full as the other microphones, uh, so I wouldn't really consider that. But I think the Blue Yeti and the Wave microphones sound very, very similar in terms of audio quality. In terms of accessories for the Elgato Wave 1 and 3, Elgato have announced that there are three different optional extras that you will be able to buy alongside the microphone. Those are a shock mount, which comes in at $39.99, dollars, pounds, euros. The external pop filter that I mentioned before, which reduces the impact of plosives and clips on nicely, which is $29.99, dollars, pounds, euros. And finally, extension rods, which are two small rods that go in between the base and the U-mount to raise the microphone by around five centimeters each. Obviously, these aren't needed if you're gonna be using a boom arm, uh, but if you're using it with the included stand, they come in at $9.99, dollars, pounds, euros. Well, hopefully that has been a useful video with loads of information and tests and a review of the Wavelink software as well to help you understand a bit more about these Elgato microphones. And I'd love to hear your opinions. What do you think of them? Are you tempted by either of them or are you gonna stick with something else? Uh, we also have a great Discord server where people discuss microphones and audio equipment to the nth degree. So be sure to join the Gaming Careers Discord and join in on those conversations. If you haven't yet subscribed to the Gaming Careers channel, I would highly recommend doing so. All of our videos are based around the ethos of learning to live stream. So do check out all of our other content and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. I'm about to try to check site with my old. Pretty sure I've broken my left somewhere. Yeah, I've got left side. Got back side to you. Nice. Bomb, buddy. Money, you're watching window below. Three for me. I'll do window. One enemy remaining. Give me the ace. Hey. Oh! Hey.